Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. The first weekend of the summer stage for the Overwatch League 2023 season is now behind us. Very, very wild week. Lots of big changes going on this week. So I'm going to throw up my picks from the past week real quick so you can see how I did. As you can see, 17-6 and six overall record for the week. 1-1 one one of those big pick games. An interesting week, like I said, a lot of things that did not go the way we expected, so yeah, uh, interesting week. And let's go and jump in and talk about the first headline that I want to talk about for this week, and that is the LA Valiant get their first win of the season, winning the battle for LA over the Los Angeles Gladiators. The fact that this happened was honestly very, very shocking when you consider the fact that the Valiant have been arguably one of the worst teams in the league all year. And the Gladiators, one of the best teams in the league. Runners up in the Pro-Am, very, very close to qualifying for the midseason madness. Um, they made the change at tank, going from Dante to Marvel, which a lot of people, generally speaking, view as a good move, myself included. And obviously, things not working out this week for them as well as they would like to. Maybe some of that is Marvel on ping. They haven't had time to really scrim with him and, and really kind of get everything going where they want to be. But the Valiant played very, very well in this game. Incredible. I believe it was a reverse sweep for them. Um, if I'm, my memory serves me correctly, it was a phenomenal game. Seeker was incredible. Liar was incredible. He had a very, very good series, especially the final map on Lijong Tower. He just popped off. It was it was incredible. If you go and watch one game from this weekend, make it this one. It really was a phenomenal game. And awesome to see the LA Valiant finally get their first win of the season. And a very good win, too. They looked good even in their second match of the week. Um, though they did lose 3-0 to the Toronto Defiant. They still looked good. They are definitely a team that I think is looking a lot better. Um, you know, we haven't seen them play in like six... We didn't see them play for like seven weeks or so. Like, it had been a long time since the Valiant last played an Overwatch League match. And so you could tell they were just behind the scenes working and grinding and getting better and better and better. And it showed. They looked very, very good in this matchup. And this is a really fun one just in general because when you... Look at the history of the Overwatch League. You think back to 2018, 2019, 2020. Like, the Battle for LA was the big, premier, especially 2018, it was the premier rivalry. No one cared about Battle for Texas back then. Um, 2018, it was all about the Battle for LA because everything was in the Blizzard Arena in Los Angeles. That was the big rivalry. That was the game people cared about. And it was a phenomenal rivalry. And, you know, it was super valiant one-sided for the first year. And then the next two years, it was super gladiators heavy. And then... Two years that they don't play each other in 2021 and 2022. And then 2023, we got our first battle for LA after all this time. And it's a banger of a match that the Valiant win. is this, this awesome kind of storyline. So this game was really, really good. It was honestly, in my opinion, the best game of the weekend. One of the best games of the season so far. Absolutely phenomenal. And I'm very, very happy to see the Valiant get a win over a very respectable Gladiators team. Who had a very rough week as well. Uh, unfortunately, you know, they lost to the Shock and they lost to the Valiant, so very, very rough week for the Gladiators, but I just want to give credit to the Valiant for, for really pulling out a huge win when they really kind of need one. I mean, you start the whole season winless. Uh, it, it definitely hurts your mental, but being able to come out strong in your very first match, second half, really, really good story for them, really happy for them, and glad to see that they were able to get the win when they needed it the most. Speaking of, though, the Gladiators and their loss to the Shock. Let's talk about that Shock team. Because, oh boy, dread it, run from it. The San Francisco Shock arrive all the same. They looked really, really good this weekend, getting two big wins over the Gladiators and the Justice. Two teams who they have struggled against and that we would, generally speaking, say that in the first half of the year, the Shock were the weaker team in comparison to the Gladiators and the Justice, but Krusty, as he always seems to do, makes that key midseason move, makes those midseason changes to make the roster look a lot better. He brings Stryker back for the third time. He brings in Luke Mino and Renko in the support duo, and they looked really, really good together. He brings in Probe for that hitscan DPS play, and the team just looks so much better. And it is always what they do. Proper, he looked great once again. He looked back to peak MVP proper. This is the reason why I said at the beginning of the year 
the San Francisco Shock are my pick to win the Grand Finals. I think right now, you still have to favor the Atlanta Reign, but this is exactly what Krusty does. His team is struggling in the early part of the season. He knows exactly the right types of moves, types of players to make those changes in the middle of the season, and he just always finds value. It is still early, of course. There are still plenty of games for him to play in the second half of the season. But my, oh my, the Shock look to be potentially back. Um, and that is the scariest thing in the entire Overwatch League when you consider a good Shock with a good proper is uh, a dangerous, dangerous thing for the League. And I am someone who thinks that this is potentially the beginning of a huge run for the Shock down the way. Because they looked very, very good. And I think that they're one of the teams that, when they're hot, they are almost unstoppable. And that is one of the things that I have always been a big, uh... I've always been a big, uh... Not fan, I guess, of the Shock. Because they just are a team that are always good. And I like to see teams that don't necessarily find the same level of success do well. So I'm happy that the Atlanta Reign are doing well right now because they've never won, you know, stuff before this season. Um, but it is very impressive what the Shock are able to do time and time again, year after year. They're just a very good team, well-run organization. You have to respect them for they're able to do. Krusty knows his stuff. He knows how to coach and he knows how to really get the most out of his players. And he really knows how to find the things that are weak and make the most just key signings when you need them uh, at the midseason. He's just done a very, very good job on it. And it seems like same stuff is happening as we go forward here in the 2023 season let's move on now to another team this one did not have a good week much like the la gladiators they had a rough week so too did the houston outlaws have a bad week the second best team in the first half of the season they placed second in the midseason madness they only lost one game and that was to the atlanta rain um, and then they, I guess they lost two games, if you include the, the or three games, if you include the other two losses to the Rain and the Midseason Madness. But the Outlaws this weekend, 0 and 2 with losses to both the Boston Uprising and the Florida Mayhem. And neither of those games were particularly close, if I'm being honest with you. Um, 3 0 lost to Mayhem. It was an ugly one. 3 1 loss to Boston. Decent matchup, but ultimately not a good weekend from the Houston Outlaws. I don't really know exactly what went wrong for them. I really could not find any one particular thing. Um, there were some times against Boston, um, especially that I noticed, um, like, Fearless to bring the Doomfist back out, which I just don't love the Doomfist. Florida, they just got outplayed. Like, Florida just outplayed them. I think Boston, generally speaking, just outplayed them. Um, I think Houston has some problems in terms of just, like, overall ability to kind of get better. I think that the, as the meta's moving, it should, you know, in theory, still favor them, considering we're seeing a lot of Winston still, we're seeing a lot of, like, Echo and Tracer and Sombra, heroes that they can play at a pretty high level. Um, but I think what we're seeing is really just the improvements that were made by the Mayhem in the offseason, or in, in the break. Uh, the, the Uprising, looking a lot better now, um, is the addition of Moby Dick as the head coach, is that really the thing that could boost the uprising in the second half of the year? But I'm happy that we see the teams like the Mayhem and the Uprising, who we know are very, very good, who we know are some of the best teams in the league, who we know are really high performers that have looked really good consistently throughout the year, um, who got kind of embarrassed by the outlaws at times um, in, in the midseason madness. Come out here, come out swinging, get those, those dubs over a Houston team that is very, very good. And those are good wins for these teams that really do solidify them in that top group. There's been this discussion for a while about, you know, Atlanta's number one, Houston's number two, and then there's kind of a gap between Houston and the next two. But that gap is gone, right? Definitively this weekend, that gap was eliminated. There is the Atlanta Reign number one, and then you have a group of three who make up the next, and then it's kind of a middle of the bracket, middle of the pack kind of mess and you'll see what i'm talking about uh, in a little bit um, when i talk about the standings but this to me was a very rough weekend from the outlaws but also just a good weekend for teams like boston and florida who really are stepping up their game these are teams with tons of talent 
great coaching, really good just all-around pieces, and they're showing you what they are, right? These are two of the teams that made the midseason madness, right? Atlanta, Florida, Boston, Houston. They should be the four best teams in this region. They made the midseason madness. They're up the top uh, of their game for a reason. And we're seeing them really kind of show that they are legit teams. And to me, the interesting thing, the reason why this is exciting is because this opens up a ton of different questions about what happens as we get towards the playoffs, right? We know now it's an 18 playoff. We know the top three teams in the Western region guarantee themselves a spot without having to play through the play-ins, right? Well, maybe now Houston isn't guaranteed that top three spot. Maybe Boston gets that spot now. Maybe Florida gets that spot now. Houston is now behind these teams in the standings. And how many teams realistically do we think are better than Boston and Florida outside of Atlanta, right? Like, not really anybody. So this weekend was huge for Houston. It was a very, very, very big loss to both of these teams because losing these matches could be the thing that forces them into the play-ins, could be the thing that really does make their their path to the, the playoffs a little bit more difficult. And so I think this matchup really was a huge deal to kind of see them drop. Um, and so to me, this really is kind of one of those big shocking moments. They went from second to fourth in one weekend. And when they were a very solid second place going into the week, and then they just dropped two games in pretty disappointing fashion, it really is kind of a big shock moment to really kind of see it happen. So I'm definitely interested to see how they bounce back. I want to see them kind of play to their strengths a little bit more than they have been. Um, you know, Gargoyle retired. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact on the team, but I'm curious to see if maybe they do want to bring in another player to fill in for him. What do they go for there? Do they try to find some other off-tank player? Or do they just say, we're going to stick just a few else who nuts we can do best? Let's bring in another damage deal. Let's bring in another support player, something like that. Um, not that they're having struggles in any of those roles, but maybe they find that they could improve a little bit somewhere, and that's what they do. So that's why my eyes are on Houston. But this weekend was very odd. I did not expect them to drop both of their series. Yes, they were against good teams. I don't think they're going to struggle against anybody else in this region outside of Atlanta. Um, there's a very real chance that Houston loses three games in this stage, right? To Atlanta, to Houston, uh, to Atlanta, Boston, and Florida, and they're on the outside looking in. They have to play in through the play-in tournament. And you don't really want to do that if you're that team. So that, to me, huge story this weekend. Another big story this weekend, one that to me was really fun to pay attention to. The middle of the bracket, the middle of the, the region, the Western region, the middle of the standings, wild, wild, wild. We end the, the week with five teams at a 5-5 five and five record. And of those five teams, who would have guessed that the New York Excelsior would sit atop all of the other ones? New York went into this past weekend, if memory serves me correctly, as either the 8 or the 9 seed. I think they were the 8 seed... I think Shock were the nine seed. And at one point in time, because the Shock had won their game against the LA Gladiators on Thursday, New York was the nine seed. And by the end of the week, they ended as the five seed. They are technically, right now, a playoff team. If the top five teams alone are the ones that moved on, the New York Excelsior would be in the playoffs, which is wild. Um, it, it's a really wild kind of stat to really think about. Um, I don't think it's going to last. I think teams like the Gladiators and the Justice and the Shock right now are better looking teams. I think they're going to be interesting to see how they play against a team like the Defiant and stuff like that. But New York had a very good weekend. And I think the addition of OG really was a perfect addition for this team. I think he really is just a better option at support than what they had with Lep and with Halo. We got to see Annie Yoon's debut this weekend. She played very, very well. Very good game from her. It was awesome to see her get to play. Love getting to see players get their debut matches. But the fact that OG is able to open Fitz back up to being the primary damage dealer for this team, or one of the primary damage dealers, lets him play the roles he's best at, lets him play to his strengths. I really do think New York is a legit team. I don't think they're the fifth best team in the region. I think that they still have room to kind of move there. But the middle of this group in the middle of this region is very competitive. It's very, 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 very close. And the fact that New York is able to kind of hold their own, yes, they played London, they played Vegas, they played two teams that aren't very, very good, but they dominated those teams, right? Vegas played really well against Boston. New York embarrassed them. New York embarrassed London. This is a team that a year ago was getting embarrassed all the time. 
but they made really good changes and they've done a lot to make this roster look much better and i'm very happy with what they've been able to do so far and so the fact that they're sitting here in the top group really the the fifth overall position in the western region is really quite impressive and really just kind of a testament to the the amount of work they did in the offseason to kind of really get the roster in the place they needed it and i'm very very excited to see where this new york roster goes from here but i was honestly really really just weirded out to look and go this team could be fifth by the end of the weekend and it they are currently the fifth place team in the western region and maybe we'll see them continue to grow from here so i do want to talk about the apac region a bit i didn't get to watch the apac region as much as i normally like to just because of my life at this point in time but i did of course make sure to catch up on and follow along with the main matches from this weekend which of course the big one for me, it was a Soul Infernal versus the Hangzhou Spark, and the Infernal, as I did expect, were victorious, dominant fashion, um, but the Spark were able to bounce back the next day and beat the Charge, also kind of as I expected them to, so I think what we're going to see here in a lot of ways is I think the Spark just don't match up greatly with the Infernal. Um, I think that the Infernal at their best are able to do kind of a lot. The Spark, I think are going to have a little bit of growing pains. Like I said, I said this in my predictions video, new head coach now that uh, Rui is gone with Creed as the head coach. It's going to take a little bit more time, I think, for this team to adjust and to get better and to kind of settle into to what they're, they could be at the kind of peak. But I don't think it's going to take a long time because he was with the team already. He kind of already knows the way they work. Um, but I do think that the APAC region is very interesting. The Eastern region is very interesting. Right now... Dreamers looking very, very good. Uh, contenders team potentially, if they keep this up, could make it to the playoffs. Um, and that's not the contenders team we would have expected to make it to the playoffs. Um, very interesting region. The Fuel looked to be playing pretty well again. They had a good weekend getting wins over O2 Blast and Poker Face. Not the toughest of opposition, but good to see them able to get some clean 3 0 victories over their opponents, which this is a fuel team that didn't look great at times earlier this year so maybe the fuel now are gonna bounce back and look a lot better as we get close to the um summer knockouts here in the eastern region um but i thought it was very interesting and i thought that what we're seeing in the eastern region is, is gonna be really fun to watch i like the contender teams i think it adds a little bit of extra fun it adds an extra dimension of like stuff we don't necessarily know it adds kind of an unknown variable a bit um obviously we saw these teams play already but we're seeing kind of changes to these rosters and, and we're seeing kind of how they they're able to to match up and we're still seeing they're looking pretty good against some of the some of the teams in the league so it's really cool to see and i'm really happy to see it but the eastern region is gonna be fun to watch i think it's gonna be interesting but still definitely have my eyes in the infernal and the spark is kind of the top two teams in this region um but teams like the fuel and dreamers look to be genuine contenders as well to potentially make it in and they were the top four teams in the knockouts for the spring stage and so maybe same four teams sitting at the top here in the summer stage that would be quite a funny little game to see play out here real quick i'm gonna throw up these standings because oh boy like i said they are a wild thing to look at as you can see in the western region tons of changes rain still sitting up at the top but outlaws drop from second to fourth Mayhem and Uprising jumping over them. New York, like I said, move from 8th into 5th. The Defiant move up. The Justice and the Gladiators drop. The Shock technically move up just one spot, but they're moving up. Titans, very rough, rough, rough weekend for them. They move down pretty low. Spitfire, not a great weekend from them. They don't move up at all. Valiant don't move up a spot, but they do nab that first win of the season. And the Eternal still sitting there in the bottom spot and in the eastern region you can see i only have the summer stage standings here um the way that the playoffs work for this uh for the eastern region is kind of weird um i understand it but it is a little odd um so record doesn't really matter in the stage when it comes to how it determines your playoff seating so um all that really matters is how they perform the knockouts um but of course the regular season will determine where they are seated in the knockout so it matters for qualification to the knockouts but not really for qualification to the playoffs um, but you can see there fuel top of the region right now considering they are undefeated on maps and then you have the infernal and dreamers 
as the other two 2-0 two teams in the region. So there you go. That is it for this week. A lot of games this weekend. Uh, hopefully, as we go forward and fewer games, it'll be a little bit easier to talk about some of the stuff that happened. But that's it, uh, like I said, for this week. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on any of the games that I talked about or ones I didn't talk about, whatever you want to talk about in the comments down below. I'd love to have conversations about the games with you down there. And if you enjoyed this video and want more like it in the future, consider liking and subscribing as your support is greatly appreciated. Go watch the Battle for LA if you haven't done it. I mean it. It's a phenomenal game. It's really, really good. Watch it, watch it, watch it. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Thank you all once again. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye.